Hey, everybody, this is Marcellus Troy Alexander, Inspiration with Troy Alexander. Listen, y'all, I'm excited to be back one more time with you. Just to let you know, you know my motto, dream, take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. I'm telling you right now, I'm excited about what's coming next, y'all. We have an amazing uh, couple tonight that I'm going to introduce in one moment. But listen, stay connected with us. Follow us on Facebook, Troy Alexander. Listen, get ready, y'all. I got thumbs up from the producer, y'all. Listen, follow us on Instagram. Y'all know I like to take pictures at Pic by Design. Follow us on YouTube, Inspiration with Troy Alexander. And listen, my nonprofit, called to inspire.org. Called to inspire.org. Stay connected with us. I'm excited tonight, y'all. We offered a scholarship a ballet scholarship of virtual lessons with the phenomenal Destiny Wimpy. Listen, not only is she one of the top 10 ballerinas in the country as recognized by Dance Magazine, but she is also featured in the Netflix documentary, Dance Dreams. <laughs> Listen, the hot chocolate nutcracker with Debbie Allen. I'm telling you right now, she's dancing at the White House under the Obama administration. Listen, but tonight, we have a winner, y'all. We are excited tonight to announce the winner is Karen Wrigley from Delaware. Let's give it up for Karen Wrigley, age 10 years old, fifth grade. We are excited to offer you. We will be following up with you and your mother following the show to offer you the scholarship of a three-hour virtual ballet lessons with Destiny Wimpe. Listen, I'm excited, y'all. One more thing I got to announce before we announce our phenomenal guests on this evening. Listen, tonight we are announcing the launch of a new project. It's going to be a virtual talent showcase every month. Beginning March 5th, we will be picking a nonprofit every month to support, to help raise money to support their dream, to help others fulfill their dreams. So listen, March 5th will be the launch of our virtual Talent show. If you sing, dance, poetry, play an instrument, listen, stay connected. The flyers are already up at calltoinspire.org. Calltoinspire.org. We will be sharing the flyers following this broadcast, and we are looking for at least 15 acts, 15 talents. And guess what, y'all? We're going to promote you and say connect with these amazing young people and young adults and everybody. But tonight, y'all, we have some phenomenal guests right now. I want to introduce Pastor, oh my goodness, Robert Ferrer and elect Lady Sherelle Ferrer. We are excited. Listen, certified Christian counselor, life coach, pastor, marriage mentor. That's Pastor Rob. And listen, elect Lady Sherelle, parent coach, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, marriage mentor, humanitarian. And guess what, y'all? Best-selling author. Yes, I said it. Best-selling author. Listen, they've been hired for 22 years and got eight amazing children. Let's give it up for Pastor Rob. <laughs> Rob, thank you so much for joining Bless us. You, man. Oh, man, listen, thank it's an honor. We are so excited to have y'all both tonight. Listen, I got to start out with my first question. You all give so much to everybody else. Again, pastorship, elect lady, and not only that, but you're volunteer. You are doing a, a life coaching. You're, you're, you're mentoring. When do you find time to grow and develop yourself? Because you give so much of yourself to others. When do you find time to grow? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, we actually, we, we're really intentional about scheduling yes so we really can't get anything done if we don't schedule <laughs> so so we have to find time and fit in our schedule time to like unwind and relax and, right. and have time to ourselves but if we don't schedule it it, it just does, it doesn't happen <laughs> right mind you i'm the scheduler She's because the scheduler. <laughs> if it was up to him it would be go 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 right. go 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 right. and i'm like we can't have that because right. you're going to burn out and then right. you know that affects not only just you but right. it affects right. a whole household right. so right. it's very essential that right. we schedule time for ourselves right. yeah wow. my wife very she was very um really tough on that at the very beginning because she grew up in a home where her father was a pastor mm -hmm. so when she when she when we got married she made a very point that we got to make sure you know family is a priority right we got to make sure that we don't 
get so busy that we leave our family and neglect our family because our family is our first ministry. Right. And being a PK, um, I've seen a lot, you know, um, and I've seen, like he's mentioned, like my father, he'll put his all into ministry, pour into people, pour, pour, pour. And that takes away from your time with your family. And before you know it, your kids are grown. Mm-hmm. they're having their own family right. and that's time that you can't get back right. so when I became an adult with my own children I was adamant about listen we're not going that narrow right. our vacations will not be oh we went to convocation and that's our vacation <laughs> no 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 no, 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 right. no I remember those I remember right. those right. <laughs> I love con- don't get me wrong I love going to convocation but that's still work. That's still right. spiritual work. That's still work. You're still working. Right. You you need time to relax, to recharge, to right. regroup, right. to recoup, so that you can come back right. and continue to pour into others. How do you pour from an empty cup? Right. Wow. Right. Right. Wow. Right. So quality. I, a, is, I would have dropped it. Go ahead. Yeah. Listen, I, 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 I'm telling you, we we. I, right. I got to ask you to when when with eight children uh-huh. with. Your own ministry. Um, I heard you say, like lady, on on one broadcast that you learn have learned each of your children, and right. and get time specific. How did you get to that point where you were able to learn each and and, and give quality time? And that's what both of you are. Right. But but how do you give quality time to your children along with the ministry that you have? See, the thing is, I was a very young parent. I started having children at a very young age. And, you know, like anybody young, you parenting don't come with a, a book that says, this is what you do. This is what you don't do. You know, it just don't. So my goal to was going to God and I say, God, you know what? I want to be the best parent that I can be. You have to instruct me. You have to guide me, you know, and until I started listening and obeying to his instructions is mm-hmm. when I be a, I was able to be the mother, the best mother that I can be to my children. Mm-hmm. And so when he showed me um, that my children are different, they have mm-hmm. different personalities, um, their mm-hmm. perspective on life, even though they're growing up in the same household with their both parents, their perspective on life is completely different because wow. there are different people, mm-hmm. you know? And so until you understand that, you, you, if you don't get it, you will be bumping heads. You will be screaming. You will be yelling. You'll be, you'll be frustrated because you'll be like, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to guide you and you're not getting it. But when you understand that every child is different, you have to come to them in a different manner. I have a child that if I tell her something one way, she'll weep and she'll cry because she, you know, her, her feelings was hurt. And I have another child that I could talk to stern and say, right. this is right. what it is, that's right. what you want to do, and right. that's right. it. And it won't right. budge her at all. So wow. they're different. And so yeah. I learned that early on. Yeah, and, and that's how I think God really gave us strategy um, because what quality time means to one is different wow. than what it means to someone else. Right. So quality time for one of them could be, you know, let's go out and have a meal. Let's go out, let's go to the movies. But someone else might need just to sit down and, and have a conversation for a few minutes. So what God gave us the strategy on how to approach each one individually, we were able right. to give that quality time, right. more, but for, for what they would define it right. as quality time. Because sometimes we'll be trying to do something right, and they right, right. Doing that as quality time. They're like, this, this is not quality time. I need you <laughs> to do this. Right. <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? exactly. And then that's how we learn. So it's yep. really God, God's the only one. Yeah. Wow. Lots wow. of prayer. <laughs> yeah. Lots of on your knees and praying. I, I, believe, I believe that. I, I want to ask Definitely. you, your, your personal lives have, have intertwined with your professional lives so amazingly in terms of what you do from counseling to mentoring. Um, but I want to ask you, was, was the ministry always in your vision or did you have any other personal goals that you, as you were growing up mm-hmm. or, or was it always into the ministry area? Well, let me answer. Let me, you want to answer that one? <laughs> She's different than me. Okay. Okay. I did not have no desire to marry anybody in ministry as far as being in leadership. Because once again, 
my father was a pastor, so I was right. a PK. So I know the behind the scenes and how much frustration can come with the ministry and how much time you have to spend into successfully build a ministry. So no, I did not see this part where we at, like leading and being a pastor and first lady. Right. I did right. not envision it. Maybe because I didn't want to, but I'm sure God mm -hmm. was showing me, but I was like, right. no. Nope. Mm, no, <laughs> right. but, um, but you know, when God has called you to a thing, He gives you the grace to wow. encourage. Right. So I thank God for that. So, right, yeah, and me and for me, it was more like, you know, like you were saying earlier, like I, I ended up doing the opposite of what I thought I would ever end up doing because I was like the person who was more shy in the corner, didn't want to talk at all. Um, it was only when I met her father where he was able to kind of develop something that was in me and, wow. and it came out through that. But together we both agreed that we didn't want to do anything that involved like pastorate or, or leadership. And right. we both say, you know what, we don't want to do that because we know what comes along with that. And I guess God, you know, when he, he hears your plans and he laughs, I guess basically. <laughs> so we ended up, so it didn't really kind of, it kind of worked hand in hand at, at, at some point, but we tried to escape it yeah, we in did. so many ways. And it's just kept, we kept ending up in the same spot where God was just saying, you know, I need you to answer this call. I need you to do this. And then once we did obey God and start to do what he said, we, we started to see the correlation of how this connects to our, our future and our purpose and then right. we started to see that develop. Right. So we kind of was like both on the same page that look, we do we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we don't go that way. Right. <laughs> wow. And we ended wow. up doing it. Wow. That, listen, that's that's amazing. And I want to say again, I mean, pastor, certified Christian counselor, life coach, uh, mentor, elect lady, again, author, speaker, entrepreneur. When, when did you find time to even focus on your goals? Because again, you have, now I asked you, did you have achieved certain of these before you had children or did you have able to achieve as you had? Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how are you able to focus <laughs> on when, when there's so much taking, drawing and needing the attention right. from you. I, I see the thing with me was it kind of happened where it was kind of like in the process things were like happening like I finished okay. college I got I, I finished undergrad while I was married while I was working a full-time job you know okay. while I had a, my all my kids came to my graduation I went to Virginia and all my kids we all drove down to Virginia to my graduation so I was I was completing college there and at the same time I was working full-time and I had just started pastoring the church so it was kind of working out like without any real planning. It just started just happening right. like a domino effect kind of. Right. You know what I mean? Pastor Rob, Pastor Rob, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me now, now how many kids did you have when you graduated college? It was seven. Yes, yeah, seven, seven, seven. You had seven kids graduating college, working full time. For and, the city and, of New York, HRA, social services. And 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 getting ready to start a church, and it's just started pastoring a church. Well, I didn't start. It was a church that was already established, and I no and no I but came yeah. as a pastor. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, but it's still you know work. Yeah, it's so, a lot, I, of, work. It's a lot, a lot of, work. of work. It was a lot of work. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how you graduated. I don't know how either, man. I, Are I you still have that. a double? A double <laughs> taking the? I mean. Well, you know, I think I think it goes back to both of us supporting one another. Right, right. So I knew he wanted this is this was a desire of him, of his. And um I knew that he would need a lot of support because he was afraid to do it. He wanted to do it, but yeah. it was afraid to do it because it was a lot. It was a lot of work to go to school, go to school full time, work full time, mm -hmm. pass a church and be a full time dad. That's a lot on your plate and it can be a little scary. Yeah. But I encourage him and I let him know you can do it. Right. And whatever mm. I need, whatever you need from me right. Right. to help you to accomplish it, I'm here. Mm. So I pushed him as well as he's pushed me in my endeavors, you know, wow. so we support one another. And I make sure I raise my children so they can be self-sufficient. Right. So mm. I'm not in the kitchen cooking every night because my my seven year old 
can make breakfast. Like, I mean, when she was seven, she started cooking right. and making breakfast right. and she was in there making right. her own food. Now she's 10 years old and she's making food and cooking dinners and, you know, know how to make right. dishes. So right. I raise self-sufficient children so they're not completely dependent on us. Right, right. Wow. And they, enjoy that. and they enjoy the freedom and the, and the, you know, the responsibility. I think that with us, we were more like, you know, I, I ventured in with the attitude that this is like part of my purpose. Right. So when I kind of viewed it as it's just as more than just me getting a, a bachelor's degree, it's more than me getting a master's degree. This is going to contribute to my purpose and where God is taking me. So that kind of kept me going the whole time. And again, my wife was supporting it and she was kind of encouraging me, let me know I can do this. I can do this. So it kind of, it kept pushing me and motivating me to just go through and make it. And thank God the pastor only came at the end when I was about to graduate. So okay. that kind of came <laughs> at okay. the right time, but but it was like okay. me me looking at it as my purpose and not looking at it as you know just a career opportunity or just a credential. I looked at it as this is part of my purpose. It gave me that that push. Sure. But, right. but I want to I want to add to that. The crazy thing about that because remember we was running running away from doing ministry. Yeah, we were. So while he was in school, um, the topic of being a pastor wasn't even no. mentioned he wasn't even talking about At it all. but when they did call him when he got the call one of the qualify one of the qualifications that exactly. you had you yeah. had to have yeah. a degree yeah, you had a bachelor's. Wow. Yeah. and so yeah. god was already setting him up right yeah and he didn't even know it right <laughs> wow oh my goodness listen right. that is phenomenal yeah. i mean i'm thinking to myself when when did you sleep I mean, you <laughs> right. right you got to <laughs> You got to really be right. intentional about that. Right. And that's <laughs> why it was a big celebration for, for all. And that's why we said it was very important for even our children to see him right. walk sure. down that aisle because right. it took a lot. Yeah, so it was okay. like to see him walk down that aisle, it just brought tears to my eyes. And I was yeah. just so proud of him. I was. Really it was, it was like doing him. homework on the train. It was taking your lunch break and doing homework. It was like getting home after work and trying to make sure you finish this book. Coming so to bed late. It, it was just like, it was hard. It was tough. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Pastor Rob. Listen, both of you are true examples of mm -hmm. persistence and pressing forward. Um, I, I, I'm in amazement. Yeah. I, I, I'm in true amazement that you both have reached the plateaus in life that you have. Did At any point along your journey, did you feel like, I can't do this? Did oh, you yeah, feel yeah. like, many you know times. what, the weight is too heavy? Yeah, oh, many times. Many how, times. How, I felt too that. many times to count on your hands, okay? <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm just like, let's just go. Let's just close everything up and <laughs> let's just go. Move away and, you know, relieve this stress. Why are we going? Why are we putting ourselves right. through this? <laughs> right, right. It, 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 it came to the point where it just became like, you know, we're just taking one day at a time. Right. Like we wake up and say, okay, let's just get through this day. And we just see what happens tomorrow. Right. Then tomorrow, let's just get through this day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just one, like one day, day at a time. time, literally. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sure. wow, listen, I'm telling you, yeah. it's amazing to hear your journey. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one thing to see you, but I'm, I'm happy to see that you made it through. I'm like, how did they make it through this? Right. <laughs> but but, but what, what, what kept, now I heard you say purpose. But but what what kept, what gave you the energy and even the inspiration to keep? I mean, for those periods of time, what what helped you to to keep going? I would I would definitely say prayer. I think we uh, we had we 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 developed the attitude that we um, with God we can do anything. anything. You know, we had we kind of kind of embraced that. Uh, we were very, definitely very supportive to one another. So one, if one of us was feeling a little weak, then somebody, yeah. the other one would say, okay, come on, you could do this. Yeah. And then the other wow. one, if that person got weak, we said, okay, come on, let's go. You get, you can do this. So we made sure that we were there to kind of help hold each other up. Right. And then when moments where it came, which just really became overwhelming, mm -hmm. you know, I always tell people that um, sometimes we say, you know, God won't put more on you than you can bear. And right, then, right, right, right. And then, then you have those moments where it feels like it's unbearable. Yeah. So you start to say, well, God, and he, he will always transition me to the scripture that says, you know, his strength is made perfect okay. in my weakness. So in my wow. weak point is the very area where God can really show himself strong in my life. So when I got to those weak moments, I was able to say, God, you know, I can't do any more now. 
I, I need you now. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this. And I, I found that to help me through so many different crises, man, where I just can't even, um, you know, articulate how many times, you know, those moments came where it was just like, you know what, this is unbearable. I can't carry this weight. It's too heavy for me. And I said, God, I just got to give it to you. And then right. from there, I can't explain. All I can do is say, it must have been God. <laughs> it had to be God. <laughs> wow. Well, let, I, I got to ask you because, you know, my father-in-law is a pastor as well. I've been a deacon for 30, about 30 years at my church and so uh -huh. forth. And I love to serve. Wow. But I got to yeah. ask you, how did you, when you became the pastor, how did you find the balance uh -huh. of meeting and and elect lady, how did you find the balance of, of, of addressing the needs of the church uh -huh. as opposed to your family? Because the church has a lot of needs. Right. That, that, so, so how did you find that balance of being able to do both? Well, that it, it didn't happen right away. No, it didn't I think in the right. beginning, we were off balance because we were okay. so focused on making sure everything were, was done for, for the church. I, I would say for me, I was more focused like, okay, I gotta make sure I do, I take care of this ministry thing. And I would, I would, I would, I would not be balanced at times, but I had to kind of get back into alignment. And of course, with the encouragement of my wife, my wife had to always pull my coattail and say, okay, come on, we got, <laughs> don't forget about <laughs> what we said, remember? So she had to remind me of that, you know, bring yourself back. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of like just refocus again. So I had those happen, that happened many times. Over time, I learned how to do it more. Um, you know, you want to help people and you're so focused on, making sure that, that everyone is going to, you know, be okay. So it's kind of like you get to a point where you lose sight of, you know, some other things that are a priority. So you got to find a place where you, you say, you know what, I got to uh, bring myself back and know right. that I'm, you know, I'm only human. God is right, the one right. that's going to do it in the first place. I'm just one of his vessels. And I embraced wow. that. And I started to learn you know, more and more. And one thing that God has spoke to my wife one time uh, and told, God, told my wife one day, you know, uh, you can't want deliverance more than the person. <laughs> the person has to want it first. Right. If the That's person right. wants it, then I can help you, but right. I can't want it more than you. And right. we, we, when we embraced that revelation, it was just mm -hmm. like, it changed everything for us for sure. Right. And see with me, um, I'm always reminding him Family is your first ministry. Uh -huh. You cannot go and pour into somebody else's family, fix wow. their life, uh -huh. and then home is jacked up right. because wow. you're spending too much time away from home. Right. So your family is your first ministry. Absolutely. So you have to keep that in mind. The church will be there when you get back. <laughs> Do what you can. And uh, but get back, get your butt home and right. let's let's get our house in order. OK, right. because it doesn't make sense that you got you can do church. Like, and this is the thing I see a <laughs> lot of pa pastors, ministers and all that. They can do church very well, uh -huh. but they are failing at their uh -huh. family life. They are failing uh -huh. in the other areas of their life, but they can do church very well. We got to be very careful <laughs> right. and not get caught up in titles right. and, 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 and this, right. this kingdom competition stuff. Like we get right. lost in that. Right. And yeah. what we don't realize is that while you're doing that, time is flying. Yeah. Your yeah. kids are growing up. Yeah. You don't even realize that your wife is miserable and she's about to walk out your life right. because your focus on ministry, your focus on the church. Family right. is your first ministry. Right. Sorry, I right. can't do nothing for you if my house is not taken care of. I'm not right. leaving my house up in the uproar, coming to run to rescue you. I'm just not. Wow. And the, and the, well, the listen, sad no. thing about that, I'm sorry, the sad thing about that is that some, in many cases, kids grow up hating the church. Right. They, they blame the church. They're mad at the church because the church stole their parents away from them. Yep. So wow. it's like, you don't want that to happen either because then that's your first witness. Mm -hmm. And you're like, they're, they're not getting it. They're, they're getting the wrong impression. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like you said, when, you, when family is your first ministry, you're actually you know evangelizing your family first. And then once they get it, you continue to move on from there. And I always tell people, self-care doesn't mean selfish. No. You know, you got to, to take care of yourself, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> pa listen, Pastor Rob and the lady, listen, um, you all should do, if you haven't done a show on that, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
I'm serious because 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 y'all was like telling me that y'all was like yeah yeah take take care of your family first. <laughs> you listen, you gonna get me in trouble with the people now because I don't know if they're gonna want him now. <laughs> listen, I, I'm I am sure that you can find enough people right. that will be willing to say, you know what? Again, it's, it's it's not that you don't love ministry and love, right. but like you love said, it. if your home is not in in, in order, right. you know. How can I be a witness and tell somebody else about That's it? Right. That's right. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I got to ask you because again, um, you, you are so transparent mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. your journey, your story, mm -hmm. um, things that you've gone through. And I got to ask you, were you always so comfortable um, with sharing your journey? Because, because, because in helping others, we have to be honest about who we are, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, so, so were, how did you get to a point or were you always just comfortable sharing because being transparent is not always easy? No, no, no it's so not. How did you get, and you're public, not, not only are you pastor and a leg lady, but you're doing these shows on social media, you're, you're putting your, when did you become comfortable with sharing you? Wow, um, that's powerful. See, this is really good. That's good. That's a great question. With, very and extremely private people very private. like i have been through stuff in my life that my mother probably don't even know about like i go through stuff and deal with stuff that i just don't tell anybody I, that's not me i'm like i'm gonna go to god and god's gonna help me deal with it because i know how humans are they like the gossip they like to talk and spread your business all over the place even though they love you but you know, people just like to talk. So I, I be, I become very private. I'm a very private person. But one thing I realized is that I'm going through all this pain. I'm going through all of this stuff, but I'm overcoming it as well. I'm still alive. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still in my right mind. Mm -hmm. Why am I not testifying about it? God right. brought me out. Right. Why, why, why won't I share it? My testimony with somebody. You know, and I understand while you're going through it, it's not a comfortable thing to talk about. It's really not. You don't want anybody to know about it, of course. But when he do bring you out, it's like, you should share your testimony. Talk about it, share it. I, I, I lost, um, I had a, a second trimester loss in 2019, of August 2019. It was so crazy because we had just made the announcement that we was even expected. We went public and made the announcement. And two weeks later, we found out that we was losing the child. The baby heartbeat had stopped. Don't know why to this day, we don't understand. But as I was going through, mm -hmm. um, the spirit told me to share. And I'm like, God, you, you sure you want me to share what <laughs> I'm dealing with right now? You want me to right. spill my feelings out in public because it's not going to look good for you because I'm really mad <laughs> at you right now. Right. So he was wow. like, share, testify, wow. talk about your testimony. And then as wow. I started sharing and talking about it, I started, the, the, the load just started lifting off of me and I just began to like start healing. And then when the woman started hitting me in my inbox and telling me, how how much I encouraged them and how some of them was going through the same thing at that very moment. Mm -hmm. And I've just gave them shrift to endure what I'm going through. Right. And I'm wow. like, wow. So as they're coming and they're telling me, and I'm like, I continue to sharing and pouring and the, the load is just lifting off of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just healing. As I continue to talk, I start healing. Right. So I've learned that I don't go through for no reason. I'm going through for some reason, one or another. And you know what? I'm going to testify and I'm going to share it with the right. world if I need to. Okay. If, it, if wow. I can help one person, yes. then my job is done. Right. Wow. And that's how that's where we are because we both were very private people. Like we very was very apprehensive about um uh, publicly saying something that we're going through or right. we're, we're suffering in some some way. We didn't want anybody to know. We wanted to make sure that we looked like we was keeping our composure, we was doing fine. But only over time, we started to say, you know what? If, if something bad happens or we consider bad or something that's hurtful happens to us, something good has to come out of it. Has to. It's something that's, that's bigger than this situation has to come out of this. And if we can just testify and somebody can be healed or encouraged yes. or empowered, then that whole thing, it won't be for nothing. It'll be like that happened, but through that, 
this happened. Right. You know what I mean? So we started to embrace that and say, you know what? Let us let let something good come out of this. You know what I mean? Don't right. let it just all be bad. Let something good come out of it. So if our testimony can help somebody, then we and we just recently kind of embraced that. Right. We really didn't do that for years. We would just, you know, we would just go through and just get through it and keep moving, wouldn't say anything. Right. And now, you know, we're starting to see, you know what? A testimony could really help somebody. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I, I well, I'm 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 so proud of you both. Thank for, you. For, Thank for, you. For, for, for taking that step because it it has healed right. so many. Right. It has delivered so many. Amen. And, and 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 grateful for, for you being willing to share your testimony and your story. And, and, and I encourage you to keep telling it because somebody needs to hear that. That's right. Somebody needs to know that 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 you can come back, that That's you can right. get up, That's that you right. can keep going. Right. And and so it's so powerful. So I thank you for sharing that as, as a part of who you are and, and because it is a part of who we are. That's yeah, right. It is. So so I but but I gotta ask you because you said something both of you did where where I heard it where you don't present yourself as being perfect. Mm -hmm. You present yourself as being fallible right. and being real and being human. Right. How were you always like that, or did you have to learn? Because I see so many people, especially th that's in ministry, mm -hmm. they 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 don't want to show mm -hmm. them falling down. Mm -hmm. right. They don't want to show them crying. Right. right. They don't want them to show weakness or, right. or as, as some define. How, how were you able to reach a place to say, "Listen, we like you. That's we right. real. We right. hurt. We That's right. But but but, did you always be at that place? Were you always at that place, or did you have to grow into that place? I think, I know for me, I had to. I grew into that place. Mm -hmm. I grew into that place when somebody had said to me, we was talking about a particular. I, I can't remember exactly what the topic was, mm -hmm. but the person said to me. Oh, you don't understand. You don't understand because you married. And I'm like, I kind of <laughs> like clutch my pearls. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't. So they made it seem like like I don't go through stuff because mm -hmm. I'm married. Mm -hmm. I have kids, and it's like in their eyes, I'm living this the the good life. And I'm like, right, right, right. if anything, the enemy attacks us right. leaders mm -hmm. the most. Right. Yeah. It's true. He stays on our neck. Mm -hmm. Like just because yeah. I'm not walking around pouting mm -hmm. and crying about everything that he's he's throwing in my way, right. don't mean I'm not going through. Right. 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 So I think when I heard that, it, it triggered something in me. And I was like, mm -hmm. wait a minute. These people think we're like some robots. Like, <laughs> this is not it. Yeah. Not it. We're yeah. human. We're real. Mm -hmm. And then and another thing that bothers me too is when I see the next generation coming up and they're like running to be like a pastor. They're running to grab these <laughs> titles, not even I, understanding what comes along, what with, comes it. along with it. Right. There's stuff that comes along with it. Yeah, again, you get a title, but they don't tell you about the baggage. Why? Wow. Because the leaders are walking around like all is well. Yeah, the devil tried it, but he ain't went. Yeah, sometimes he did win because you were in your bed <laughs> laying and couldn't get out because you're so depressed and so, right. you know, so jacked up in your mind. No, wow. we have to be real. Right. Let these people understand the enemy attacks us too. Right. But by the grace of God, we're still standing. Right, right. We're still right. standing. We're human. Yes. We hurt. Yes. Right. We bleed just like you. Right. You know, right. I hear about this. I hear about church hurt all the time. <laughs> you hear everybody talking about church hurt and i'm like church hurt nobody hurt more than a leader yeah nobody get hurt more than boring <laughs> day in right. day out get slapped in the face constantly giving their last wow. i've seen my parents give their last wow. they give clothes food to people pay people rent and then when the people wow. got on their feet That's right. you know what they did uh -huh. They got up, walked out yeah. the ministry, and <laughs> yeah. act like they never met us, never heard of my pa of my of my father. Right. And so you can't tell me about right. church hurt. You right. know, right. we hurt too. We right. bleed. We are humans right. too. Okay. Right. Right. Yes, we're leaders, but we still hurt. And so yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and I think that's great because we we deal with things so so differently. Like right. with me, if the thing that kept me from wanting to share and be transparent is that I had a, it was a level of like vulnerability 
Yeah. Where I felt vulnerable because I felt like for some people, I feel like they'll be glad to hear that, that I'm not doing well. <laughs> and then I, and then for other people, I felt like it was like it was showing some sort of weakness or something. So I had to kind of embrace the fact that, you know, it doesn't show weakness and it, and it doesn't matter if somebody's happy about your demise. You somebody can be blessed by your testimony. Right. Somebody uh, can be encouraged by you saying that, you know what, I understand. And not only do I sympathize, but I empathize. Right. You know, I've been there. Right. I've been in your shoes. I know wow. what it feels yeah. like. And for you to say that, it, it's a sense of like um, um, of hope and peace for some people. Mm -hmm. You know, like as a crisis counselor, I talk to people on the phone and it's like, you know, you're just an emotional support. Right. Because somebody just need to be heard and they need to know that somebody is attentively um, there with them mm -hmm. in that moment. And I think when I start to learn that, I start to be a little bit more comfortable with sharing that, you know what, you know, my father had passed away last year and I was like having a hard time. And one day I just publicly posted that I, I was feeling down today right. because my father passed and it hit me. It right. didn't hit me at the funeral and it didn't hit me, you know, leading up to it. But it was for some reason, one day I'm sitting at home and it just hit me out of nowhere. My father's gone. And I just wow. shared that. And through me sharing that, I connected with another pastor and I was able to do work with him on an outreach ministry for um, grief support, like a grief support group. And because he saw what I posted about how I was feeling down about my father's passing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, God is telling me to just share it. You know, you, you're not going to always be on on top all the time. You're going to have your moments and it's okay. And if, if people, even if, if there's a group of people that's glad to see you suffering, right. that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> even if it's a group of people who, right. who may look at you as weak, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, you got to do what God says because right. there's a bigger picture right. at the end right. of it. And, right. and when you're in the business of help, you know, I always say you can't help anybody if you're not willing to be transparent. Right. I'm not going to anybody to get advice about what you heard or what you read. I want to hear, you know, kind of like you had this experience and then and I want to know how did you deal with it? How how did you come out of it? Like what was the steps that you took to help you come out of that? you know particular right. thing right. like yeah how did you deal with it when it didn't work out right like how did you deal with it when you prayed right. and, and you didn't get the answer that you right. wanted like how did you deal with it where you was sure and it just got disappointed like how did you deal with that right. and when it happened how did you overcome that and those are the type of things that we want to be able to answer amen wonderful powerful listen it's a even jesus wet so so we we all feel right, right. right. But, I, I, but again I, I i thank you again for sharing such an amazing part of your journey with it i gotta ask you um because i noticed that sometimes when the parents uh -huh. are called into ministry uh -huh. the children have to somehow continue to follow <laughs> along but i want to ask you um have you had the experience, if you're able to share, um, where any of your children vision is not so much in, not that they don't love ministry or love God, but that are, are not so um, consumed with because it's your purpose, right? right? So, right. so, but have you had the experience where you've had a child that, again, loves you, loves ministry, love, but, but, but has attention that would like to focus elsewhere? Wow, and, 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 and if yes, how did you deal with that? Well, I'm going to answer because him, yes, we do. Okay? okay. And, you know, him being a leader, you know, you want everybody involved, right? right. You want everybody to have that passion that you have and mm -hmm. have that drive that you have. And it's like, you know, that's your purpose that God had called you for, mm -hmm. you know? So you're going to have that that drive, like when things is not going well, you still gonna have that certain drive because it's right. your purpose, it's what right. God had called you to. Right. So sometimes I have to remind him, like, listen, hon, um, these children are not saved. They're not professing um, salvation. You know, my, one of my daughters are, you know, truly duly saved. You know, Tatiana, I think she's saver than me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes yes. I have to remind him, you know, you know, don't be, don't get upset when they not like running to grab the mic or running to sing the song, you know, because, you know, remember, this is your purpose. This is what God called you to. And we don't want to bang them upside their heads with it to the point where they hate church and start developing this, this 
this disgusting feel about ministry. So we're going to find out what they like to do, what they love to do, and help them work that area in ministry. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's some, you're doing something that you love mm -hmm. instead of we making you do something and making you show up. Mm -hmm. So every one of our children have a play to, a part to play, especially since the pandemic, because our church have been closed since last year. We, our doors been closed, uh -huh. so we've been doing everything virtual. So when it's virtual from our home, we're not even in the church building. So our children are hands on. Like we really can pull this off without our children being a part of it. So, yeah, what I would say is that they all are, are, are part in some way. Mm -hmm. And I do, I believe they all have accepted Christ, but it's the way I define ministry. Like, what is your definition? So my definition of ministry is not what it used to be. <laughs> it's not just right. church. It's not just when you're in the four walls of a building and you're having a worship service or you're, you're reading the scripture or you're praying. Like my definition of ministry goes so well beyond that now. And I've learned that through my kids that, you know what, ministry is not just this. Like we we, we can do ministry by doing this, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or we can do ministry in this way. So that, that's what I really had to find. What's the definition of it to me? You know what I mean? Wow. Not just church. That's ministry is, is bigger than that. It's like, we don't want to put ministry in the four walls of right. just the church. Right. Yeah, we right. may have a service. <laughs> we may have a worship service because we give God what's due to him. He told us to assemble together, mm -hmm. but that's not all it is to ministry. There's so much more. And my kids have, have really shown me that, you know, there's, there's other areas of ministry where you can effectively reach people. Right. And there's other areas of ministry where you can encourage people and empower people. And even if it's outside of, you know, your church service on Sunday. Right, <laughs> you know right, I mean? right, exactly. I'm still, I'm still doing kingdom work. Right. And I still have, I'm still motivated by, you know, doing the will of God, right. you know, whatever that means right. at that moment. Right. So I think once I got to that place, it opened me up a lot because I started to say, you know what? Wow. There's so much more. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I feel yeah. like I'm not in a box. There's so much more. And, you know, you know, we love, we love volunteer. We love, we love hospital ministry, nursing home ministry. Yes. We love um, youth. Man. We love it, man. That, yes. I mean, I feel like that is the most moving parts when we go to the nursing home and we're there with those people that want to leave and go outside and right. they, we're there with them worshiping or if we're going to the hospital where you know parents are dealing with kids that are having some kind of illness mm -hmm. and they just need somebody there to yeah. like just be there with them and encourage them that part of ministry man it, it's just wow. it brings a tear to my eye that's where it really that's where it really, that's where it really matters yeah. man yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. we love it wow well, yeah. listen, I got to, what, 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 what do you want your children to take from you and learn from you? Because both of you have achieved amazing plateaus. I mean, let alone being amazing parents, right? That's, that's, that's an accomplishment by itself, <laughs> but, you. but, but, but to have written in this amazing bestseller book, Elect Lady, uh, Sherelle and, and, and Pastor Rob doing what? you know, crisis counseling and, and, and coaching and both of you all, what, what do you hope that your children see in you that would inspire them? I tell them this all the time, that I want you to see that you can do anything with Christ on your side. There is nothing that you cannot do, nothing that you cannot accomplish. And I also want you to supersede mom and dad mm -hmm. don't try to just wow. reach our levels i want you to supersede us and also on top of that i want to be able to give you the tools mm -hmm. to be able to supersede us so when we leave here we're working on leaving a legacy for our children mm -hmm. so people say oh you quiet or you keep to yourself a lot yeah because i'm building something right I'm building something wow. that matters. I'm, I'm minding my business because there's something mm -hmm. greater mm -hmm. that's forcing and pushing me to right. do what I need to do. Right. I don't want to leave my children here with bills and right. trying to figure out how to bury me and all that stuff. It's time that we as colored people learn how to start leaving legacies so that our children can succeed us. Right. That's what Absolutely. I, I, I totally agree, man. I, and, I, and I've always push this point that, you know, you know, I, I really encourage them to live a Christ-centered life because I feel like 
that's where your fulfillment is. Mm -hmm. And I want them most importantly to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want them to live a life where they feel unfulfilled. They just can't get any peace. They always kind of searching for something and they just can't quite get it. I want them to feel a life of fulfillment, um, that they're fulfilling their purpose, that they're doing what they've been born to do and that they're, you know, pleasing God. And I feel like with that, um, no matter what the rich, how much riches that you obtain or how many, how much influence that you end up getting, if you can live a fulfilled life that even when nobody's around right. and you're by yourself, wow. you can wow. feel fulfilled and yes. you're not full with a whole bunch of regrets yes. and shame right. and, and, and uh, uncertainty, just feeling like you don't know what. I, that would be like my dream mm -hmm. for every single one of them to sit back and just feel like, you know what? I, I feel like I live a fulfilled life. That's I feel fulfilled. You know, I feel like wow. I'm, I'm doing my purpose. I feel like you know, there's nothing missing, right. nothing broken, no broken. that I, I'm, I'm whole, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm not like just scattered all over the place, but mm -hmm. I'm really whole. And I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not finding it in a man. I'm not finding it in a career. I'm not finding it in a, a, a position, but I, I just find it in Christ. I feel like I'm fulfilled. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And if I could get that, that would be my dream of every one of them, you know, um, get to that place. Right. And feel fulfilled. Um, well, well, listen, I got to ask you both because I know I only got a short time with a leg lady real quick. So I'm no, it's okay. I canceled it. I postponed it. <laughs> it's all right. We good. <laughs> so, so, so I got to ask you, what's, what's next for you both? I mean, Pastor Rob, you have a master's, I believe, of arts in Christian ministry and pastoral counseling. And first lady, you just, I mean, off the chart. Are, is, is there something coming next? Is there another bestseller book? Yes. 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 What's yes. next? What's next? I am one yes. thing about me is that I am never satisfied. <laughs> I, no. I'm ne never satisfied. <laughs> and I've never, and I pray to God that I'll never become content because wow. as long as I live, I want to keep producing. I want to keep putting stuff out there that will that will be here when I when I'm long gone. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So it's always constantly something. I'm working on a book now. Um, it's called Life After Loss. It's my experience with loss. Um, I'm, it's, it's detailed, very detailish, and I give you the raw, straight truth, the good, the bad, and the ugly, along with scriptures that that help me to um, come through my uh, my situation. So that's one thing I'm working on. I'm working on some other businesses too. So awesome. Yeah, are we actually we're working on some things um, to benefit the, the community we're really into outreach mm -hmm. so right now our church and our separate ministries it kind of collides and we want to have something uh, in the area of counseling like a facility for for counseling christian counseling especially uh our, our dream is to have a, a christian school at some point where kids can learn in a in a christian Perfect. environment yes and really learn Perfect. um those principles that help to, to embrace that fulfillment that we talked about and of course, we want to do a book together too, yes. really for families, yes. like to really like um, give some insight and really give some um, some tips and techniques that you can use um, and strategies when you're dealing with your children, um, especially communication, that communication gap and, and finding ways to like, you know, really reach them in an innovative way. Right. <laughs> so we were, we're coming together to kind of put something together for families because right. um, that's really, really our heart. I, you know, God gave me the name Faith Family Church mm -hmm. um, wow. with, with real purpose in mind because we want to really see the family unit healed yes. and restored. We want to see the family unit um, start to thrive. You yes. know, so many, so much brokenness in families. And we want to see God really eradicate the dysfunction yes. in families and start to see restoration yes. and oh. see families working together to build. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, Love you know, it. that's our heart. That's what we're really driven to do that. Uh, we love outreach and we want to have outreach facilities mm -hmm. that will help those that, that are in need. Uh, at some point, be some sort of rotation. So there will always be a place for people to come to right. um, when, they're, when they're in need. Um, so, you know, other things are more like in the works and we're kind of like working on the details. But I know you can't share everything. I know. You can't share everything. <laughs> <that. laughs> you can't share everything. <laughs> listen, I get it. I, I get But listen, y'all, get get ready for a lady Sherelle's journey, being a number one bestseller on the New York bestseller list, a number one on Amazon, number one everywhere. In the name and it's going to change lives. It's going to heal. Amen. It's going to uplift. It's going to renew. Amen. It's going to restore. And I hear a word saying, 
you shall recover all. So everything yeah. that, that so I'm excited for you, like yeah. Larry, uh, uh, Pastor Rob, you both, listen, I, I, I said, I'm already seeing the school. I'm already, <laughs> Amen. So I'm just saying, God. Listen, but whatever, whatever you can ask and believe. That's right. right. But listen, and, 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 and I see two people on the screen because they're the ones that say we're two touch and agree on anything. Right. Right. Come on now. So, so, so it's, it's already done. Oh, it's already done. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm excited for you both. Yeah, um, exactly. I gotta ask you uh, along your journey because there's so much coming. That's 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 getting ready to. Um, if you could go back and change any part of your journey, would you go back and do it over? Is there any part that you would do differently about your journey thus far? You know, initially I would say yes, <laughs> <laughs> but when I honestly think about it, it was in those tough times where my courage, my confidence, and my knowledge have developed. Right. So I don't regret none of it. I don't right. regret none of it at all. Right. Right. Um, those things actually pushed me and catapult me to where I am today. Right. Because if some of those stuff did not happen, you wouldn't see a Sherelle Ferrer talking on live right now. Right. I, if you would have asked me two years ago if I'd be doing this, <laughs> I would absolutely know. Really? Right. That's yeah. really. Right. I, was, I like behind Two years the ago? scenes. I like behind the scenes. I like yeah. being back there, getting the job <laughs> what, done in the back. What? Now before I come to you, Pastor Rob, what what brought you to the front? What was it that what, did something happen that that said that said to you, I need to step out because I because I got something to say. What what happened? Um, I think it was my last tragedy when I lost my my child at the wow. second trimester. That that took me to another level. Even my faith in God, like at first I, I denounced God. Okay. Let's be honest. I'm like, God, you know, I don't want anything to do with you because you did this. You had the power to change it. Like, I don't understand. I couldn't, I was confused. But then when I started understanding the process and I still don't completely understand the why, but I do understand that God has my best interest at heart. And when I understood that, I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to continue to trust you because I have no other choice. Right. Like, who am I going to talk to when I'm going through? Like, who's going to help me get off the ground when I'm like, can't figure things out? Like, who else? Mm -hmm. Who else can I depend, depend on? There's nobody else that I can call on that's going to come and see about me and mine like he do, okay? Right. 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 You know, and sometimes the enemy will have you sit there and think about all the things that he did not do that right. he did not right. open the doors that he did not open right. but you forget about all the doors that he did open right. and all the times that he did come and see about you and even right. in the bad times like those things happen for a reason mm -hmm. and so when that happened and he told me to talk about it i kept talking about it until i couldn't talk no more and i still talk about it to this day and i'm, <laughs> and I'm still going see look i can't stop talking <laughs> It's all right. right, I like Larry. It's all right. You got the platform. Right. You got the platform. Right. So it's all right. Keep on talking. Never right. let anybody right. tell you that you can't speak. You can't right. listen. I remember one man. I think his name was Blind Bartimaeus. But Pastor, right. correct me if you're wrong. Right. He shouted out. Yep. They tried to quiet him down. And what did he do? He hollered loud. Yeah, that's so, right. so elect Lady Sherelle, keep on hollering louder. Right, keep, that's I'm right. Keep, it's too late now. Right. I, I just, they don't let the they don't let me out the cage. It's too late. That, and that's what you know what it's so funny she said it because I felt the same way. It was times earlier where I felt like, you know, God, I wish this would have happened sooner. I wish that would have happened. You know, I started kind of like having this this issue with the timing and all the, all those things. But God had to really show me how he has me right on schedule. And everything that I've been through, everything that I've seen, you know, even the things that that I really wish never happened, mm -hmm. you know, God's saying, I have you right on schedule. And, you know, I've, I've been molding you and making you through it all. And I so now I start to embrace a different perspective. Right. I start to look at it more like, you know what, I needed this to happen for that to happen. Mm -hmm. and wow. I needed that to happen for that to happen. I start to really embrace you know, those moments where I was so challenged mm -hmm. and so overwhelmed and God made me you know, the person that I am now through it. You know, I, I said, my wife said the other day, she was like, you know, you actually have have have, have made some progress in this area mm -hmm. of your personality. And it took 
some attacks yeah. for you to get wow. there. Like yeah. it really wow. took people to really go wow. crazy for you to start to develop yeah. into who God really had for you to be. So, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm quick. I'm the first one to say, I wish that didn't happen. I wish that didn't happen. I wish that didn't happen. <laughs> but, you know, God is starting to help me to understand that, you know, he knows best. I'm still right on schedule. Um, everything that I've seen and experienced has only helped me to become the person that God is making me now. And I try to embrace it as much as possible now. Mm -hmm. And I encourage other people too. I encourage other people not to live in, you know, a state of regret or, you know, I wish it would have happened like this. And I wish that would have happened. I wish it, I wish that didn't happen. You know, I always tell people, you know, you're you're not on your own schedule, you're on God's schedule. schedule. (laughs) So, Uh so just like embrace it the best you can, even with tears in your eyes. The Bible says, he that so in tears shall reap in joy. joy. So those tears fertilize the ground that caused to bring your harvest. Right. So you just got to say, you know what? Uh, I take it and I, and I embrace it and I'm going to allow it to make me better. I want to make sure that something good come out of this, yes. no matter what it is. Yes. I want to make sure that something good has to come out of this. Mm-hmm. And when you have that mindset, uh, it keeps you driven, it keeps you motivated, keeps you moving forward. Yep. For sure. But listen, I'm telling you right now, you both are an inspiration. Thank uh, you, you are changing the world. Thank um, you. And, and again, I, I'll say it again. I'm proud of you both. I'm, I'm you. proud of, of, you. of who you are, of, of who God is making of you, in you, around you. Thank um, you. And it's just wonderful to see uh, you win. Thank <laughs> you. Thank listen, you so listen, much. We talked before the show. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> said, it's wonderful to see you win. Wow. You know, but I, I love the fact that you are so real. Yeah. Right. You know, you're down to earth. You're real. Right. People can relate to you. Yes. And 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 that's what we need today. People yes. need to be able to talk to somebody. Right. Like you said, I believe we're not robots. We're right. not perfect. Right. We make mistakes. Right. That's why we got an eraser on the pencil. We right. make mistakes. <laughs> right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. So, but but I I'm I'm so excited for, for this time to to share with you. I, I want to give you time to to speak to those again. And 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 I heard another topic, Pastor Ralph and Alert Lady. I heard another topic about dealing with you know um any regrets right right, right. i can't go back and change right what right. happened right you know it's 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 past right so so i can't go back but i can change going forward i, I can start right. today yes and right. and, and so it's so important for people to understand because right. so many are living in the past mm-hmm. right. right and they can't let go Right. of the past right. yeah. and 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 i want to ask you and and again i'll, I'll ask this, this last question um elect lady again i want to ask you with the loss and both of you all of of your child what what was the strength enough in you that allowed you to be able to step forth and to talk about that because i i i, I th- th- there's so many that i know have gone through hurts and what happens is when they talk about it they have to relive it. Right, and, right, right. And they prefer to have it erased right, from their memory. Right. What 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 gave you the strength to keep that memory mm-hmm. there and 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 still have enough to encourage somebody else right, right, right. to hold on? Wow. Um, see, there's two laws that we had. We had the one that was in August 2019, but then we also had one that was in 2010 and he was two years old when we lost him to a rare disease. With that first loss, I completely went into depression. I completely shut down. Like there was no talking about it. I didn't want to be bothered. I was in complete full blown depression. So with this loss, I said, you know, I told God, I said, I I don't want to go back down that route. Like that was horrible for me. You know, I don't want to go back down that route. And I didn't like my children seeing me being depressed, you know, because we got to think about them too. They they grieve too. Mm -hmm. And so they watch everything that you do. They see what you, Mm -hmm. how you go through. So I told God, I said, listen, I don't want to go down that route. Mm -hmm. And that's when he told me to like, you know, to talk about it and Mm -hmm. to just, you know, just talk about it. Be real with your feelings. Address mm-hmm. your feelings, and, and and it's okay mm-hmm. because you are human. You know, right. and then I and some people say, "Oh, you can't question God." Listen, the relationship that I have with God, we like homies, so I could question him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When I don't understand something, I'm like, God, you you got to make this make sense. Right, right, right. 
right. show me a scripture, right. blow a signal in the wind. You know, you got to do something, right. you know? Yes, yes, yes. Because I need understanding. Yes. In order for right. me to help somebody else, I need to understand what I'm dealing with, what right. I've dealt with, like, right. for real. Right. So Yeah, I think that's really helpful because when you go through things like that, it's like you said, so you, you put it, you put the, the, the right in the, um, you really verbalize it great when you said sometimes you don't want to relive that moment. Yeah. So you just act like almost that didn't happen. Right. And you, and you, and you, you actually try to compartmentalize that and just put it somewhere and say, I'm not going to deal with that at all. And I learned that, you know, by doing that, you know, you know, you never get to a place of healing. Never. It's always there. It's always there lingering and it's waiting for the right moment to come out and hit you. Yeah. So you have to kind of deal with it head on. And when I do like grief counseling, I feel like those support groups are healing for me because I'm able to like have those conversations mm -hmm. and hear other right. people have those conversations mm -hmm. and have a let a person deal with a thing the way they deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't tell a person how to deal with their emotions in a specific moment, no, especially can. through a tragedy. No. You got to allow them to deal with it the way they deal with it. As long as it's not, you know, self-destructive or they're not hurting right. someone, but you got to allow them to have that moment, really deal with that yeah. pain the way, what, best way they can right. and let God do the healing. And it's so funny how God will work to bring healing. Sometimes he'll, he'll do it in a way that you would least expect. Like, like my wife said, she never would thought she, her talking about it mm -hmm. was going to be the thing that helped her toward her healing. Right. But right. that's what the thing that God used. So right. we got to stay so connected and say, God, I just feel disconnected. God, I, I just, this, this tragedy has made me feel disconnected from you right. because right. I feel like, like, like I remember when my, when my son had passed, I almost felt like I wasn't safe. I felt like I wasn't protected. You know, like when you walk right. around, you feel safe, right. God's covering you. Right. And then when right. a tragedy hit, you're like, wow, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. So you start to feel like, am I safe? Like what, what anything can happen now. Right. So, you know, I had to process that, get through those emotions, get through those feelings and, and really get through that. And I always encourage people, you know, seeking professional help, you know, connecting with people that understand, that empathize, that been there, you know, helping you, supporting you through that, that's going to help you get to the road of healing. Nice. So I think with us, you know, that was part of our journey. We got married at a young age. I, my wife was 19 when, I, when we got married. I was 21. So we really was so young that we've had so many people saying, you're not going to last, you're not going to stay married, you're not going to make it. Th those comments actually gave us the motivation <laughs> to right. say, you know, we are going to make this work. Yes. Got away to show these people that it's going to work. Right. So you never know how God will work or what he will use right. to give you what you need to get you to the next level. I always tell people, I do an anger management class. And I always tell people, the Bible says, be angry, but mm -hmm. said not. Wow. So he said that that emotion is going to happen. You're going to get angry. But how uh -huh. you deal with that anger is going to be crucial. You can use your anger as fuel mm -hmm. and motivation to push yourself to the next level. You can use your anger to say, you know what? I'm not okay with this. Right. I'm going to work and do whatever I need to do to accomplish this goal. And it was it was your anger that sparked the flame. Right. <laughs> so you never know how what God will use. He'll use that moment where you got so upset that you end up doing something that you wouldn't normally do, do. <laughs> and you're able to get past that yeah. that hurdle that's in your life. So, yeah. you know, we, we just say, you know what, we embrace however God decides to, to help us or, or push us into the right direction. We don't want to say, God, you can't do it that way. God, you can't do it that way. Or God, I, it ain't going to work like that. We, we're like, God, however you choose. I just need to be healed. Right. However you choose, I just need to be free. However right. you choose, I just need to move forward. That's what I need. So however you however you choose to do it, I just need you to do it. And when we stay open for God to do it, however He chooses, He always comes through some kind of way. And, <laughs> well, and, yeah, you're good, but yes, yes, oh, yes. Yeah. And one thing I realize is that most Christians don't know how to grieve. Yeah. Um, they will tell you to pray about it. You know, leave it out. You know, they tell you the good churchy stuff, the church lingo, the great church lingo. You know how that goes. Um, but when I was going through with the loss of my um, second trimester loss, God showed me clear as day, um, men and women sitting in pews in the church, and their hearts are bleeding from grief, and they don't know who to talk to. They don't know who to go to because. 
you know, it's it's kind of like a um, taboo. a taboo thing to say that you're hurting and that you don't know how to move from this place of hurt because you're supposed to be a Christian. And so when God showed me that, I'm like, oh, no, we can't have this. I can't have this type of blood on my hand. We're going to talk right. about this. We're going to help right. you to right. grieve. Right. OK, right. so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I listen. I, I I said it before, and I'll say it again. Your your journey and your story is healing so many right now, and and I'm grateful that your willingness to share, and 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 the one thing that I found, Pastor Rob and Elect Lady, is 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 the fact that people have this expectation, mm -hmm. right? Especially of pastors and first lady, right? <laughs> like 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 like. So, so, and, and even those who, you know, encourage in God and, and feel like, well, how come you didn't pray and how come that didn't get healed? Or right. you didn't pray right. and God right. didn't, well, you know what? God has a purpose for our life. Right. And we don't know which, what, listen, we talked about Joseph before the show. Right. <laughs> we talked right. about, you know, right. Job went through a process. Everybody goes through right. a process. Everybody. But God. But, but he allowed the experience right. to be a testimony to heal and deliver and set others free. That's, That's right. right. That's right. So, so again, I'm grateful wow. for, for, for you both. Now, listen, I, I got to ask you, I, I got like one or two more questions I want to ask you. <laughs> and then I want you to share all your social media contacts. I want to share about your shows so folks can follow you. Um, I want to ask you, like, what does Pastor Rob and elect Lady Sheriff, what do y'all, if you can share, what do y'all do just for fun? I'm like, what? Oh, what are y'all doing? <laughs> no, no cameras, ain't no kids. I mean, are y'all like sitting down with potato chips with or uh, with with um, you know, a uh, 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 peach cobbler watching a show? I mean, what do y'all do to, to just relax and have fun? See, he gets the luxury of seeing the other side that nobody else gets to see. <laughs> <laughs> that I wouldn't dare bring to social media. <laughs> right. No, but um, yeah, we just enjoy each other's company. Like yeah. it, we really do, no matter what we do. And even if we're doing ministry together, yeah. it's like, we just enjoy it because yeah. we're together. Right, right. So, we love movies too. We love doing movies yeah. together. We watch movies together. We do. Um, like family stuff together where we like, like one of my daughters love to cook. She likes to bake. Mm -hmm. and another one does cooking like food. So we do stuff like that together. Mm -hmm. Like little exercises, kind of like things. I'm really into movies. I love movies. I love documentaries. I love um, suspense and thrillers. Um, I, I think my wife's more into action and comedy. I like but, comedy. But we love to just, you know, <laughs> hang out and relax and just watch movies and just right. do little different activities, stuff that you wouldn't even think. You know, wow. we might play cards or we might do um, some, some um, where we start uh, entertaining ourselves by acting out people or stuff like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my favorite. We, we act love doing out that. People, we have yes. a ball doing that. So, Guess who I am? <laughs> listen, listen I'm, I'm, I'm telling you all, you all are, are phenomenal. You. I, I love you both. I mean, you do all such, and I love your, your joy. I love your freedom. Yeah. Thank you. Right, because so many people are just so bound by. Yeah. Listen, yeah. we're not perfect beings. That's we, right. We, we all trying to make it. That's, That's right. right. That's right. But 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 I, but I'm so grateful that that you are the way you are, mm -hmm. and I know that everybody you know is, is not you know. But I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a clap. I'm a I'm a lift. You. I'm Thank a say you. keep on going. Keep doing what you're doing. It's exciting. Listen. Thank Share you. with us, please. Where can people follow you? How can they connect with you? I mean, I love Pastor Rob. I think I saw a video the other day about mental health. Yeah. I, oh, 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 before I let you go, listen, I got to ask you both, please just talk a, a, a brief moment about, about the value of professional counseling, professional health. Because I'm a believer, because there's this thing I, I've seen where sometimes church people, like, like some, not everybody, right? But, but, but to see, listen, I pray. I know God's a healer, mm -hmm. but sometimes I might need to go to a counselor. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. So, so can you just talk about that for a brief moment? Absolutely. I would love to do that. I also want to segue to some information that I would love to give out to, to the listeners. Um, so I always teach people that it's very important to know that it's okay to seek professional help. Someone who is trained and who is professional, but also anointed. 
to do the work of counseling wow. because wow. every person comes to a place in their life where they need some sort of counseling or emotional support. Mm -hmm. They need help in processing their feelings or getting through those journeys, those challenging moments that mm -hmm. are seeming to be overwhelming. Right. So it's, it's absolutely okay to reach out and say, you know what, I need to talk to somebody. I need, uh, I might not get all the answers, but just being able to express myself, maybe an action plan or a treatment plan, something that I can kind of follow to help me get through this season mm -hmm. of my life. I might be in a winter season right. where things are hitting me from every direction and I need to get through this winter season. So I need a, I need a professional to kind of help navigate me through this season in my life. Mm -hmm. So I encourage people, I'm a, I'm a Christian counselor and life coach. I have a business page on Robert Ferret LLC, mm -hmm. and you could go there. Um, you can book me if you like, but I also am a crisis counselor for a program called Project Hope. And if you go to the website, newyorkprojecthope.org, you can find tons of information. This is funded uh, by FEMA, and it's absolutely a phenomenal resource. Um, people can call and receive emotional support. They can receive education and they can receive information about services that they can benefit from. Mm -hmm. So with this service, it's absolutely confidential, anonymous, and free. Mm -hmm. Free, free, free. Anonymous, confidential, and free. Mm -hmm. So if people are going through a crisis or you feel like you need to talk to somebody, you need some emotional support, you might need some services that you can't find answers to, you can definitely um, go to newyorkprojecthope.org and connect. Now, I work in the Orange County area, so for those of them that, that are in Orange County, there's a number that they can call and get directly to a crisis counselor. But if you're not in Orange County, you can call 311 and ask about Project Hope. Mm -hmm. And I, I encourage people to do that because this is a, a volatile time and people are overwhelmed. And earlier today, I taught a, a, a little lesson on, on being burned out. So you really need to reach out for help. It's okay to say, you know what, this is too much for me. I, I need some help and it's okay to do that. And you can also find that we have a, 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 a marriage ministry where we want to mentor married couples. It's called the Marriage Mandate. And they can look that up on Facebook to get more information. Uh, about you know our ministry. Amen. I like Minister well, Ralph. Yes, <laughs> and I am a parent coach, and mm -hmm. you can find me on Facebook at Sherelle Ferrer, the parent coach, or you can just follow my regular page, Sherelle Ferrer, because I share information on there as well. We, I also. Um, I also collaborate with JCC Beacon after school program where I provide um, parent coach sessions on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. On Wednesdays at 8, 8, 8 p.m. And on Fridays, we have family fun night where we do fun things with families. So it's, it's been a great ride thus far. And um, we've had some great connects and it's been excellent. So, if you know, any parents that can use some support, listen, we come on there and we talk bad about our kids, okay? <laughs> we say they get all our nerves. <laughs> they eating up all the food in the house. <laughs> you know, where can I get resources to get more food? You know, we provide resources as well. So it's a great um, thing to be a part of. I call it my little tribe, you know, where we can just, you know, gather strength from one another. It's, it's, it's great. It's awesome. So, yeah. Wow. And also make sure to go to our church page, Faith Family Church, Faith Family Church. Um, you can go to our page and get more information about our church and what we're about. We're really about family. We think family is very important. We, we know God loves the family and we want to encourage, empower, and strengthen and restore the family unit. So, right. you know, you can be a part of what we're doing. We're on virtually right now. So we're having service on Sundays at 3 p.m. But throughout the week, if you go to our page and you push the notification, you'll see there's always something going on during the week uh, at Faith Family Church, whether it be prayer, um, teaching, encouraging words. Right. It's always something going on on our page. And also, if you need customized items, I am the owner of You Name It Creations. You can follow my page, You Name It Creations. I am also on Etsy. I do customized and personalized items, okay? See me, your girl, for your personalized <laughs> items, okay? Don't be to look out. Listen, not only can you get a, 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 a word from the Lord, but you can look good doing it. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Listen, connect with a lady <laughs> like her, 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 I'm telling you. My goodness. Is there anything else y'all do or don't do? Um, well, I also have a foundation for my yes. skin uh, called RJ's Foundation. Um, okay. We have, thus far, we've volunteered. We volunteer. We do walks. 
for various um, illnesses to raise funds. Um, we've gave away care packages for Mother's Day. We've also gave away, we did masks. I've, I've sewn masks and gave them out to um, about 150 people in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so yeah, we do various things and I'm looking to do much more in the years to come. Wow. Well, listen, all I can do is say amazing, amazing, Thank amazing, amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. My last question to you, again, you can answer any way that you want. And this is the last question I'm going to ask you, unless you want to share more. The one who, who is having a hard time seeing their dream through the hurt, through the pain, through the difficult parts of their life, or just in, just in life, what would you say to them to encourage them to never, I ask all my guests this, to, to never give up on their dream? Wow, that's so powerful. Um, I will say this, um, to never forget your why, the why you started, why you wanted to do it, why you feel that God called you to do it. Let that be your fuel. Because I'm, as an entrepreneur, you're going to hit some bumps in the roads. You, you would think your family and friends would be the first people to support you. I'm going to tell you that that is not true. Um, but as long as you're putting your all into something, use all your social media platforms. I always say, go to where the people are. Stop looking for people to come to you. You need to go to where the people are. So if the people are on Instagram or they're on Facebook, you need to go there so that they can see what you offer. Um, if you're not talking about, they say closed mouths, don't get fed, right? right. Yeah. So if people don't know what you do, what you offer, how do you expect support? You know, it can be a discouraging role, but I say keep going and remember your why. Remember right. your why. Right. And, I, and, I, and I will add to that by saying that, you know, if God gave you a dream, you know, make sure you keep in mind that he had to give you that dream for a reason. There must be a reason that he gave you that dream. And if he gave it to you, he's going to provide in one way, shape or form. So don't get caught up in the timing so much. Um, just continue to plow forward and make sure that you keep him in the forefront and he's going to really lead and guide you. Um, the Bible says your gift will make room for you mm -hmm. and bring you before great men. So if you continue to um, develop that gift, nurture that gift, um, continue to grow that gift, mm -hmm. uh, there's no there's no way you will not eventually get to your goal and what the goal God, God has for you. In most cases, your goal is only a minute size compared to what God really wants to do right. in your life. The dream is bigger than what you might think it is. Right. Uh, well, listen, y'all, you see why I had him on the show? <laughs> now you know. Listen, thank you so much, Pastor thank Rob. You. Listen, Pharrell, I like Lady Sherelle Pharrell. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank, so you honor to us. thank you. Oh, no, it's been an honor. And listen, we're going to definitely be talking more, but thank you so much thank for you. coming on the show and sharing your wonderful journey. It has changed lives. Thank, thank you so much for coming. Listen, everybody, this is Marcellus Troy Alexander, Inspiration with Troy Alexander. You know we come on every week to, <laughs> to tell you the dream. Take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. Thank you so much thank for you. connecting with us. We're going to be back next Monday night, y'all, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Listen, y'all, we have a guest who was a former hit on the uh, TV show Girlfriends on Broadway. Now she, listen, get ready. Get re Next Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss it. Thank you for watching. And you know what I say, don't give up on your dream. Hold on to it. Guess what? It's coming to pass. We thank you tonight so much. Thank you, Pastor Ralph. Thank, Thank you, Ella Lisa Have a Thank great you. night. Thank and you. we'll see you next week. Good night. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Good night. Have a good, good night. night.